So look guys, Mr. Fedorov here. And again, since the technology couldn't keep up, I'll give you Wednesday's lecture notes now and I'll send these and have Mrs. Fedorov play them for you, okay? So hello from Atlanta. And yeah, there's other folks in the room, but that's okay. They think I'm weird too. So you remember we talked about vectors. Remember we talked about our airplane and goes here in one direction, wind pushes it in another direction. Let's talk about projectiles now, okay? So imagine that you have a projectile going up at a certain velocity, okay? 10 meters per second. Okay, and actually, let's give it a little more velocity, right? Let's give it like 40 meters per second, right? Okay, and it's going, let's say it's fired from a cannon that shoots it straight up, okay? Boom, okay? Now, we know it's going 40 meters per second, but we know that at the same point, gravity is pulling it back down, okay? And gravity, if you remember from the other day, is coming down at 10 meters per second squared. Remember, gravity is an acceleration, so 10 meters per second squared, which means every second it's chewing 10 seconds off of this velocity. So what that means in practical terms is that after one second, it's now going, let me draw a little arrow down here to show you, it's going 30 meters per second, and after two seconds, it's going 40, or sorry, 20 meters per second, and so on and so forth, until eventually after four seconds, way up here at the top, it's for a moment not going to be moving at all. And in fact, if you see video of balls and things shot straight up in the air, they pause for a moment before they continue. Okay, so, but it's not gonna stay there. It actually is now under the influence of gravity beginning to fall faster and faster and faster. So after one second of falling, we're now five seconds into the flight. It's going 10 meters per second. After two seconds of falling, it's at 20 meters per second. After three seconds of falling, It's at 30 meters per second. And the irony is when it hits the ground where the cannon was, it's actually going the same speed it was that it left, 40 meters per second. Bam, when it hits the ground. So that's a flying object going straight up. Most flying objects aren't going straight up though. Let's imagine that you kick a soccer ball. And we have a lot of you ladies on the soccer team, right? We were talking the other day about that. Um, <clears throat> And so the soccer player, okay, one of our lady soccer, soccer players, is trying to kick the ball into the goal. Okay, there's the goal. All right, and so she starts over here, and hopefully from wherever she is, okay, here's our soccer player lady here. All right, she kicks the ball, and it goes like that. And you go, huh, so what's happening along the way with that? Well, we can take this curved line and think of it as a series of straight vectors. Because like when she kicks it, there's a certain portion where she kicks like this and a certain portion where she kicks like that. Okay. And so as it goes up, okay, the force going up is being diminished or the velocity going up is being diminished because gravity, of course, is doing what gravity does. Gravity is pulling down. So this arrow gets to be less and less while this arrow stays constant. This little bit stays constant. Okay, now at some point after that, that arrow flips down because now gravity is pulling it down. It's going forward at a constant speed. This arrow here stays constant, but this arrow here gets larger and larger and larger until hopefully at some point she hits the goal. Yeah, okay? So we see the transformation of this constant forward force, but then the gravity pulling and reducing the, the acceleration, or reducing the velocity upwards and then eventually flipping it, the velocity downwards as the ball goes like that. <clears throat> and any experienced soccer player knows you can actually really play with this. For example, if we imagine you're gonna kick on goal here, okay, but which way, whoops, dropped my fan, hold up. <clears throat> How's that gonna work? So if 
our mythical soccer player here. Well, she could kick something low, right? Okay. She could do it like that. She could go like that. Um, of course, she could also go like that right over the top. In each one of those cases, she has to modify the angle at which she's kicking it. That's the upward vector, along with the, with the amount of force she puts into it, this vector, okay? Like that. So to make this bottom one work, she has to put a tremendous amount of force into it because this upward one is so small that it's going to run out really fast. And the chances are, in fact, it's gonna hit the ground before it hits the goal, okay? Conversely, here, she makes the upward vector really, really high and whatnot. And so she doesn't have to put quite as much forward force into it, but she's trying to lob it. And of course, it's really easy to put a lot of force and a lot of upward vector on it. And then she lobs it right over the back of the goal. And that doesn't do anybody any good. And somewhere in the middle is the optimal. Somewhere in it is the optimal. And it turns out this is about 45 degrees. Okay, that's the optimal placement of power and upward push to bring the ball into the net most efficiently. It's the same calculation that artillery guys use when they're trying to lob an artillery shell the furthest distance, this optimal place between the two. And in any one of these cases, again, think of it as a series of arrows and lines, and the arrow on top gets smaller and smaller while the arrow forward stays constant. And then eventually at some point it flips over, so on and so forth. Okay. Now, as you learned about in Mythbusters, the most interesting application of this is a bullet fired from a gun, okay? Okay, one of the hardest things to grasp intuitively is that if you have a gun, okay, let's see, let's see if we can make a 45, there we go, okay, that if you, a bullet fired from the chamber and a bullet held beside the gun, let's just put another bullet here, and dropped will hit the ground at the same time. You know, there's no way that could be true, but it is true. When you fire a gun, basically in less than a second, the bullet's already hit the ground. It's just a matter of how much of this force is here because of course, gravity is constant. Okay, gravity is pulling it down. So the trajectory is like that, okay? And so yes, even while this is going, it's still being pulled down at a constant rate. And again, this presumes the gun is level, and so you're not aiming it up at all. It's going straight across, and then eventually it's going to hit the bottom. And that happens at exactly the same point between here and here. Same moment. And this is true whether you're talking about a little handgun, a high-powered deer rifle, an AR-15, or a 50 caliber sniper rifle. The moment you fire and you drop, within less than a second, the bullet is on the ground. It's already hit. And that's, that's just physics. And that's how that works. So again, sorry what happened with the Zoom video. Not what it hoped for. I will be back in the uh, classroom tomorrow, and we'll have a lab where we'll actually look at this. Not with bullets and guns, don't worry. But we'll look at this, and we'll go from there. All right. Miss you all. 